opinions expressed on the following program are those of the hosts and guests and not necessarily those of the staff or management of alttalkradio.net. What's going on, guys? BoxingTalk.com, AllTalkRadio.net, and welcome to the Dante's Boxing Nation show. I am your host, Dante, and joining me today are my special guests, and my co-host is back in the studio today, Arthur and Ryder. New and Radical is back in with us, and let me introduce my um, special guest by way of phone. We have AKA Rap King. We also have, added on to the list, Ecking Fight News, and my man King Youssef who uh, was following and watching the show. He watched it a lot. He liked it. He told, him, he told me he wanted to be on the show, so I appreciate that. And uh, he has a big channel on Instagram, okay? It's uh, King Yusuf, all right? So uh, welcome to the show, everybody. Let's go ahead and get into it. We got a lot to talk about today. And um, I want to open this up, guys, with uh, Austin Trout. Austin Trout, he just had his little comeback fight. I don't know if you guys seen it, if ev all of you guys seen it, but let me, got, let me give you guys a little bit of a summary of exactly what took place. Austin Trout, he defeated Dawson. I believe it was Daniel Dawson. Mm -hmm. Now, Austin Trout, he got knocked down oh. twice. He got, he got knocked down oh. twice. Now, you know, this is the thing, man. This is what trips me out. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but I notice every time when an undefeated fighter, when he gets knocked down for the first time or knocked out for the first time, he always comes back in his return fight, and the majority of times he gets knocked down again. I remember it happened with, with Fernando Vargas, mm -hmm. um, your boy uh, Reed, who, mm -hmm. uh, who also got knocked out by um, uh, your boy Trinidad. Mm -hmm. It's happened with a lot of fighters, right, Norrin? Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, let me go ahead and um, start with you. Um, Norrin, what did you think about that, his performance? Um, it's, uh, I, was, I used to be real big on Trout. Um, I, I still think he's a talented fighter. Um, but it's like you said, uh, D, it's a psychological thing. You know, and it, 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 for some reason it just, you know, it, it takes time. You know, it's, they, obviously there are reasons. But, you know, it, it's, it lingers with a fighter, you know, that uh, when, when, when they, like I said, they taste the canvas for the first time. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I bring up, um, let's say, um, who's, a, who's our guy? Uh, James Kirkland. You know, when he got knocked out by, um, by uh, Ishida, um, you know, and then when he came back and he, he got he tasted the canvas again against Angulo, you know, we, we, we thought it was a wrap, mm -hmm. you know, but he was able to pull it out, which is, you know, why, uh, you know, we, we, we give a lot of props to Kirkland. Um, but, you know, it's, 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 it's just a psychological thing that lingers with guys, though, you know, it's one of those things, um, one of those dynamics of boxing. Now, as far as Trout's overall performance, I mean, you know, he got he went in there. He did what he was supposed to do. He got the victory, you know, but he, he got caught by those two right hands, you know, those mm -hmm. two straight right hands. And as a matter of fact, he walked into him. Walked right and, into and, him. And, uh, he was reaching. <laughs> he was reaching. <clears throat> um, Dawson played the um, – what, what Dawson did, he was he played the counterpuncher in those two scenarios. And um, Trout isn't uh, comfortable being the aggressor. You know yeah, what I mean? And, and, and that's, you know, that's how he got caught. So, you know, I mean, I give him, if we're going to do report card status, I give him uh, I give him a C plus. <laughs> you know what I mean? B that's minus, fair. B minus C plus. And, um, you know, I, I just can't say, you know, where he's going from here. Obviously, he wants to get back on the, you know, back in the contention for a world title. And, um, you know, it remains to be seen. You know, it remains to be seen. You know, we all often talk about guys need to, you know, uh, switch trainers you know what i mean um maybe that'll help uh trout um you know i i just think i think he needs to get over that psychological hump you know what i mean yeah, and, 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 and his men and his mental to um to get him back to world title status and, and it looked to me like he woke up a little bit after the knockdown Absolutely. because then he started to pick it up mm -hmm. and he looked a lot more impressive ak what kind of grade did you give austin trout this past weekend uh, in my opinion, you know, Austin Trout didn't look too good uh, versus Donson. You know, I heard Donson was a, a huge underdog. 
you know, like a 29 to 1. Yeah, 25 but to 1, not, yeah. It, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't a good look for Trout because it's, not, it's never a good look to keep him knocked down, of course, but when Canelo knocked him down, I gave him a pass. I was like, Canelo's a hard puncher. Mm-hmm. When Trout knocked him down, I was like, you know, I mean, uh, Lara, yeah, I mean, Lara, when Lara, Lara knocked him down, yeah. All right. Lara is, is accurate punch. He's an accurate puncher, and, you know, he caught him with a good punch. But now, you know, Donaldson, you know, it's just not a good look. And also is the way he got knocked down. You know, he he overcommit. You know, when you overcommit, you're vulnerable for counter punchers, for counter for a counter. And especially when you overcommit to the body, that's even more dangerous. You yeah. know, and he got caught with two good right hands. And uh, in my opinion, he just didn't look too sharp. And he looked sloppy. And this is not the chart who beat Cotto, in my opinion. I, I feel like if Cotto, if they have a rematch, I will favor Cotto, uh, in my opinion, at this point. Definitely. So he has to really improve. But uh, a fight that I would like to see him uh, in in the future is, is him versus Angulo. If Angulo wins his next fight, I know he's moving up to 160. But that will be a, a good, interesting style, you know, style matchup. They both fought Lara and Canelo, and they both did against the different type of style. So it would be an interesting style matchup if they ever fight each other at this point. Absolutely. And Ekin Fight News, once again, welcome to the show before I, you know, let you talk. And I, I just want to tell everybody, go ahead and subscribe to these cats, man, because they, once again, have really good channels out there. So what did you think about the fight, Ekin, Ekin Fight News? Uh, thank you, Monte. Very glad to be on the show. Uh, honestly, I, I didn't get the chance to see the fight uh, live. Uh, but, but, you know, considering uh, about what happened, uh, a trout got knocked down twice, right around the second. Just letting then. you, just letting you know, Ek, you're breaking up a little bit. Just letting you know, or a, a lot. <laughs> go, go okay. ahead. Go uh, ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't get a chance to the fight, uh, but in the general consensus, uh, he got knocked down twice and he came back. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so he showed they come back from adversity, but, um, but yeah, I guess it's a fighter. He should look better uh, overall. I, you know, I believe he got a knockdown as well, right? A later in the fight. Yeah. What? I'm sorry. What, I didn't catch that last part. It was breaking up. What did you say, uh, EK? I believe Austin he scored a knockdown later in, uh, yeah, yeah. in the latter half of the fight. Yeah. So, you know, give him credit for coming back. Uh, after being down twice. Uh, yeah, he's a solid fighter, and uh, I would also like to see him face Angulo. I think that's a great fight. Yeah, yeah, that that would be a good fight. That would be a good fight. Like I said, yeah, that, yeah that's what, go, go ahead, Nick. To this, because like you guys said, uh, to agree completely, nobody can ever, um, you know, question Trout's heart. You know, you definitely got the heart of the champion. It's just, again, it's psychological. Uh, because, you know, to go down twice, you know, you got to consider the opposition, who you're in there with. And for, you know, to, to take those two knockdowns, you know, consecutively in the same round by, you know, a guy like Dawson, you know, it's, it's something up there. It's a mental block that he hasn't, uh, you know, he hasn't surmounted yet. Uh, absolutely. Now, King Youssef, uh, do you think that Austin yeah. Trout, you think he's declining, man, or you think uh, he can get back to where he was? And, and even get better. What do you think, King? Uh, for this comeback fight, like when I was watching it, I was like, he was training hard, doing everything right. Uh, it was supposed to be like a WBA like title like, eliminator for like a shot. But then like I noticed, like it's not like a title shot, like, like it's a comeback fight. So Dawson, he was pretty good. But the worst thing is like Chart hasn't like, like he still hasn't, like, adapted to, like, getting, like, knocked down and stuff. He's still, like, shocked about it, like, in his mind. Yeah. Like, I thought Dawson was going to knock him out, like, in like in that round, like, when he when he landed those two right hands. It was close. But but, but it was close. But Trout came back, composed, and uh, just started boxing more effectively. He was doing, like, more combos, landing his shots perfectly. But, but we have to see, what, like, what's going to happen to him, like... He has to dig down deep. Yeah. I, I think something that uh, Austin Trout needs to correct, like you said, he needs to learn how to fight on the inside. He needs mm-hmm. to be more comfortable. Every now and then, he needs to, you know, get into that that uh, Lucas Matisse, 
Ike Corte, shell up type, you know, get close with his guard up so he could work yeah. on the inside, you know. He doesn't do that. He's too reliant on that left hand, trying to reach, trying to land it from a far distance. And that's how he got countered mm -hmm. because uh, your boy Dawson, he's seen him trying to land that left. He took a quick step back, and he let, like you said, uh, Trout, Austin Trout run right into it. You know, he ran right into it. So he really needs to work on that, Austin Trout. I mean, um, it, it's going to be tough for him to uh, go against the um, top-notch fighters. Exactly. You know, I, I was still like, <laughs> there's so many fights. Like AK, I believe, said we could see Trout versus Angulo. I would still like to see Trout versus Canelo, part two, you know. But we know Canelo. Oh, that would be vicious, right? But we know, we know yeah. Canelo. We know Canelo ain't trying to give nobody a rematch, especially oh. yeah. it was close. But Trout was called out. Yeah, you said Trout was called out? Yeah, do you know uh, Jay, Jay Rock Williams, Julian Williams? Yeah, yeah, he called out Trout. Fighter. Yeah, he's a beast. Yeah, he said, like, I, and that guy's a beast. Like, I've seen him fight, like, in, was it, Kenda? Like, like in Montreal, Canada? Yeah. On... Yeah. On like the show extreme, uh -huh. oh, he's vicious. He'll just go in to land like his shots. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, that boy is dangerous. They, you, you seen him, Norin? Um, uh, Julian? Um, let's see, I'm, Williams, I'm, right? Yeah, yeah Williams. Mm -hmm, I'm mm -hmm. forgetting his name already, mm -hmm. but I watched him on Fox Sports. And, and, and see, and that's the thing about again, Trout. You, you put him against, you know, a guy like Angulo, even Canelo again. You know, regardless of, of what said. You put him in there with Canelo again, or like you said, a hungry guy like uh, Williams. You know, when if, when that mental block ri rises, you know, to the forefront of his psyche again, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you're, you're not in there with a Dawson. You know, yeah. you're in there with somebody who can get you out of there this time. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we're going to see if that's going to be, you know, his, his undoing or the undoing of his career, you know. Some guys can suppress it. Some, you know, some guys get stuck there. Uh-huh. You know? Absolutely. And before I go on, guys, um, I forgot to uh, do my little drop. I got to plug Box Fan Expo. September 13th will be the very first ever Box Fan Expo. We got new people being added on to this list every day. Just added is Juan Marquez and Sergio Martinez, okay? Nice, nice. So you got, we got Mike Tyson, Riddick Bow, Ray Mercer. Um, it, it's a lot of people. And like I said, more people are added. Now, if you guys want to purchase tickets, I want you to go to my description box. I have a link. It's my personal link, okay? So you guys go to that link, and you can purchase tickets right there, okay? September 13th, Box Fan Expo. It's going to be like our first ever all-star um, boxing weekend, you know, because you got the Floyd Mayweather fight the same night, and then you're going to have all the boxing stars. They are all going to be here in Las Vegas, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So um, let's move on, and let's talk about Manny Pacquiao, man. I I'm getting real hyped, man, watching the pictures. I've been waiting to see the face-off because I knew how tall Chris was. I've been waiting to see the face-off with Chris Algieri and Manny Pacquiao. And what's so funny is after Pacquiao stood right next to Chris Algieri, then he starts saying, you know what, man, I'm concerned with his height. I'm concerned with his reach. And then he even said, this may be my most difficult um, fight. Mm. Uh, people thought I was crazy. They, no, and they thought I was crazy when I was saying – this is going to be a difficult fight for, uh, for Manny Pacquiao. You now, crazy? <laughs> I mean, who would think that, right? Oh, who, who, who in the hell would think that? But, <laughs> but, but, but anyway. It's not, it's not the first time, Dante. It's not, it's the, not first, the first time. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Amanda, Amanda No, Because they said I was crazy when I said um, Bradley was going to give um, Marquez the work. It was like, Dante, you crazy. You this and that and this and this and all that, right? Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, Marquez coming out. This going to be my most difficult That's fight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh, hey, hey, listen. Uh, crazy is a euphemism for ahead of your time. Hey, there you, you know what I mean? So amen. Take, take hallelujah. It, take it as a compliment, B. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's. I, I think it's going to be a competitive matchup. I definitely still got – um. You got to go with got to go with Pacquiao. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But um, uh, Algeri – definitely has the physical dimensions that's going to you know sh are potential problems mm -hmm. you know what i mean you know yeah. you said the size the reach you know it's it's there but pacquiao has we we've seen him you know again like I said it was margarito margarito obviously you know has a lot of flaws you know he was um you know uh just coming off of his suspension of course you know obviously margarito's not somebody who's high on my list of favorite people of course but that regardless notwithstanding we have seen pacquiao overcome size difference you know 
as a matter of fact, that's one of his claims to fame. So, you know, we'll, I, I'm, I'm going with Pacquiao. I think Pacquiao should be able to pull it out. Um, interesting. Uh, Algeria, he has uh, a victory over, uh, over um, what's his name? Rodnikov, uh, Emmanuel Taylor. Yeah, Emmanuel Taylor, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, who, uh, don't, don't say, uh, <laughs> my man, Broner's next opponent. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Um, so, you know, Algeria's a young, undefeated fighter. He's, he's from my, my neck of the woods. Yep. You know, uh, let's just hope he goes in there and, and puts up a good showing, you know. Um, it, it, it's not going to be, or it shouldn't be, the blowout, you know, that it looks like on paper. You know yeah. what I mean? He, he should be able to present some difficulties for Pacquiao. I, I hear you. Um, Ekin Fight News. I'm going to call you EK for short, all right? <laughs> so, all right. All right, that's fine. EK, e yeah. e man, what is your take on that fight, man? And, and what do you think about Manny Pacquiao saying that he thought that this may possibly be his most dangerous fight? <laughs> well, yeah, I think I – think Right at that face-off, he realized, you know, that this fight could be harder than 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 he he thought it would be. Especially, you know, he, he's got his own uh, entourage that that's always boasting, him, right? He, he always uh, he's he's generally a confident fighter. He usually doesn't worry so much, but but he's fighting a much taller, uh, linkier opponent, and and Algeria has a great jab. He's got a great jab. He, he throws good combinations. And he can even find out the inside a bit. You saw that uh, against Ruslan Pravonikov. I think this is a very interesting fight. I think, however, I think Manny Pacquiao, uh, it, it, as much as we, uh, we, we see his flaws, he, he's still a very uh, great fighter. Uh, he was able to beat Tim Bradley uh, in the rematch. Uh, he, he, will, he should have a speed and... Uh, a speed advantage along with a power advantage. So Algeria really needs to uh, tread cautiously and catch Manny Pacquiao off balance um, and, and score clean shots. And he's got to do that for 12 rounds. Because in China, I'm not sure how much credit he's going to get Good for point. Uh, the combinations when Pacquiao, he's a flashy fighter. Can you guys hear me okay? Somebody washing no, dishes yeah. over there. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I hear you. I hear you, man. You know, Pacquiao, he's a very flashy fighter. You know, he throws, uh, you know, one or two combinations. You know, kind of like Oscar De La Hoya back in the day. He threw a few combinations. He went around just like that. Mm -hmm. he, it, it doesn't have to land with Manny Pacquiao because he's got that speed and, and that pop. And even if Algeria's blocking shots, he might get credit. So, you know, I see this going to a decision. Uh, it could be close and controversial. Um, nice, but nice I, you know, I, I, I perhaps Manny Pacquiao might get, might get the edge on on the judges' scorecards. But I, th I, th I definitely think Algeria's underrated, and it's a, it could be a great fight. Yeah, good assessment. Very excellent assessment. Uh, AK, wh wh what's your take on it? Yeah, man. To be honest with you, I don't know what what, what Manny Pacquiao was smoking when he took this fight. Mm. Because, I mean, it's. It, it's not the biggest fight. You could have. It's not the biggest money fight I met. You know, it's not the most exciting fight. And then it's a difficult fight for him. It's not like he's cherry picking a guy who is he's gonna make easy work out of him. I know people are gonna say, oh well, if you're saying it's gonna be a challenging fight, well, it's not a cherry picking fight. Yes, it could be. I mean, if Danny Garcia when he fought that tomato can called Salsa, let's say Salsa beat him. Let's say, like, hypothetically, let's say Salsa beat him. Well, that will, will we say Danny Garcia, oh, he didn't cherry pick Salsa because Salsa beat him. No, we, we will still say Danny Good Garcia point. Danny Garcia cherry picked him, right? Good point. So Manny Pacquiao, he could have fought the Keith Thurmans, Kel, Kel, you know, Kel Brook, um, Canelo, all of them guys, but he chose to fight Algeria. And like I said, it's not a guy who's going to make you look sensational. It's a guy who, in boxing, in my opinion, the guy who's going to give you the hardest time is a, a tall fighter who fights tall and is slick and you, knows how to use his footwork, and especially a guy who has height and reach on you, like a lot, a lot of height and reach. And yeah. we we already seen that with Gamboa and Crawford. So it's just the wrong type of style. And Manny Pacquiao, I guarantee you, he won't look good unless you know he go, you know, in the first round he shocks Algeri for somehow with his speed and power and knocks him out. Other than that. There's no way Manny Pacquiao will make easy work out of Algeria, in my opinion. 
And I'm still picking, I am picking uh, Manny Pacquiao because, that, like, um, you know, EK said, there's no way, in my opinion, uh, <laughs> Algeria's going to win in China. China. There's no way, in my opinion. And, and, he has and, to and, dominate, and I don't see that. And Manny Pacquiao, like he said, that was a great point that he pointed, that he pointed out. You know, he's flashy, and he, he could just throw a flurry, and he wins the round, you know, uh, even if you don't land it. But, um, I, I mean, I don't know why they took the fight, in my opinion. It's a dumb choice because Freddie Roach, he always, you know, when he picks Manny Pacquiao opponents, he always uh, picks guys not at their best. Like when he fought Oscar, when uh, Manny Pacquiao fought Oscar, you, you hear Freddie Roach say, oh, you know, Oscar, he don't look good in the way in, you know, he looked drained. When, when Mosley tried to fight Manny Pacquiao, he told Mosley, absolutely not. We, it's it's going to be it's gonna be a catchway at 142 if you want to fight us. And then, you know, Mosley backed out of it. And when, you know, when he fought Margarito, it was a catchway after Margarito got knocked out. So I don't understand why they picked Algeria. I know they're fighting at a catchway, but it's still, you know, it's like I said, it's not that best cherry pick. <laughs> if you're going to cherry pick somebody, <laughs> you should cherry pick a guy he's who a, you're going to look great against. He ain't even a good against. cherry picker. God he's a very damn. Poor. Yeah, he's a very yeah. Poor cherry picker. You know, That's like when, when Rios, if, if Manny Pacquiao never, never fought Rios and Let's say Manny Pacquiao's fighting Rios now. I'd be like, okay, I understand why he's cherry picking Rios because he's a punching bag. Mm. But when you cherry pick a guy who has reach and height on you, and then you're going to be crying all night, oh, he was running. You know, he was, I told you he was going to run, Freddy Doach. Like, come <laughs> on, man. We're not trying to hear that shit. You knew that from the start. Why you, why you trying to fight a slick fighter? From the I mean, start. like, it's, you're going to hear Manny Pacquiao crying all night out there, you know, running and shit. But yeah. so, I, think, I think probably Freddy Roach. Saw the way um, Algeri comes low, you know, um, when he fought Provokhnikov in the inside, and he thinks that Pacquiao probably could switch the angle on him and catch him with flurries like he did with um, Bradley a couple times in the second fight. So that's probably something that he's looking at. But, I mean, when, in my opinion, even if he, like I said, I'm picking Pacquiao to win, but he just won't look good, you know. Yeah. King Yosef, your, your thoughts on the fight? Uh, my first thoughts, uh, right like in the face-off they had in China, <laughs> Algeria like kind of like bend his knees down to like match Pacquiao's height. Yeah. Which I thought was kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then during like the media talks, uh, Freddie Roach said like one key thing which I find is kind of wrong. Like he's saying, uh, will Algeria come to run or to fight in a real fight? Yeah. And yeah. I was like, the, war, the you see what I'm saying? Running, like, yeah. You see what I'm saying? They yeah. already bring that up. They're yeah. bringing that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they just brought that up. Like, as soon as, like, the reporters asked about the about the Provaganikov fight, oh, will Algeria run on his bicycle? I mean, like, come on. Like, it's boxing. Learn yeah. learn how to cut off the ring. Yeah, absolutely. But how I see the fight going is it's a 50-50 fight for me. Like, Pacquiao has been declining. Hasn't looked since great since like the knockout. Uh, the only good performance I would say he had was against Brandon Williams, who just who stood straight forward. And that wasn't but even a good like performance a to me. Go ahead, uh, no, go ahead. That that was just like a comeback fight. That's it. But for Algeria, it's like different. Like he'll jab in, he'll like 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 he use combinations. He'll like outwork the guy and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like he did that to. Provanikov and what did Provanikov have? Just only the left hook. That's it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the way I'm seeing it, like, this is this is being in China as well, and and just how AKA said, like they're not gonna give him like the decision because yeah. it's Pacquiao's yeah. new home. Like it's 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 the Vegas on Roy, <laughs> as Bob Arnum calls it. <laughs> hey, and you know what? You know when when Freddie Roach said, you know, um, will Algeri come to a fight or one? You're basically yeah. saying almost, you know, when you say you don't want him to use his footwork, you're basically saying, oh, well, can you give us an advantage and li- let us get a free shot? Like, can you imagine a guy, a fighter, you know, putting that on the rules, like, hey, can, can I get a free shot on you? You know what I mean? Come on. What do you mean you don't you, There's no I rules, know. you know, in the boxing rules, they should – Freddie Roach, when he brings that up, like, you know, oh, is, will you run or will you come to fight? Why you didn't fight Porter? Porter was going to come straight to you. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you yeah, know what he signed up for. So, point. I, you yeah, know, point. I know they're going to be complaining. 
throughout yeah. like, eight, you know, um, the 24-7 and all that. But we, that's already expected. So, you know, it would be interesting, though. Man. Or, AKA, like, uh, go ahead, go ahead, I King. also wanted to say, like, uh, like, during, like, was it, like, a few months ago, like, Freddie Roach was, like, interviewed by Radio Raheem. Uh, so then we were asking about, like, choosing opponents and stuff. And then the most particular thing that Fred Roach said, like, oh, we want Danny Garcia. And then I was like, what? Hmm. They're actually willing to, like, work with Al Haven, Golden Boy, and talk to Oscar and stuff. I was, but, then the, but then he said, like, we are willing to fit Danny Garcia and then the other welter which uh, Heyman has. But then why, like, why choose Algeria and stuff? Yeah, yeah, like, when yeah. you could when you like, could stop calling up people that that don't want to face and stuff. Hey, man, we we bringing up some real good stuff, guys. Um, I, I wanted to respond to almost everything you guys said, but I want to um, respond to what AK said. The question, why did he take this fight? I truly believe he took this fight because they looked at it this way. First of all, you got to go back to what Freddie Rose said after the Bradley fight, the rematch. He said, I think Pacquiao should move back down to 140. So, so I think that's where he'll get his knockouts. These welterweights, they might be too big for Manny Pacquiao. This is what he said, and they stuck to their plan because that, what did they do? They look for a guy who didn't have a lot of power, at least not on paper. He, he you know, he, he's at least on paper, he's not really looked at as that much of a threat. They seen him get knocked down, running around with a big close eye against Provodnikov. You know, and a lot of people believe he barely won that fight. I thought he won decisively, but a lot of people, they look at it as him barely winning that fight. So that's the reason why they took this fight. Because, see, they could have looked at Robert Guerrero. They could have looked at Amir Khan. Uh, Amir Khan made all the sense in the world. They used to work together. They were both on 24-7. That fight would have sold itself. But they took this fight because, on paper, this looked like the safest opponent to choose. And, and you know, this says a lot about Manny Pacquiao in not such a good way. Definition because, of a cherry pick. My yeah, bad, no, no mm -hmm. doubt, For no sure. doubt. It, it says a lot about him because, like I always say on my videos, every fight for Manny Pacquiao from this point on is a 50-50 fight. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's and, and, and let me get my, my thoughts on the fight. I'm going to be, um, you know, the redhead um, stepchild in the room that's standing by myself on this one, <laughs> you know, and I'm going to tell you all right now. <laughs> I, I don't give a damn. I could be wrong or whatever, but I'm standing by myself. I think Algeri is going to pull off an upset. I think when it comes to tall mm. fighters, when it comes to tall fighters, Oscar De La Hoya, Margarito, neither one of them fighters fought Pacquiao like a tall fighter. You know, they all came forward. Oscar De La Hoya, as far as I'm concerned, he felt, he felt Manny Pacquiao's power, and he said, ain't no way I'm getting embarrassed and getting knocked out by this little motherfucker. Excuse my French. You know what I mean? I think he said that. And from, and from that point on, and from that point on, Oscar De La Hoya played it safe. Margarito is 5'11", but he fight like he 5'3", you know? So the, the whole thing with Chris Algieri is he going to be sticking and moving. And, and the, the big thing for me, I think the big question is, can he deal with the lights? Can he deal with that Manny Pacquiao name? Can he deal with exactly. that? If he can deal with that, Manny Pacquiao is not going to look good, and it could be a serious upset. So I'm going with the Cinderella man. I'm going with Rocky Balboa, and I'm going with like you know, my and, and I'm going with the Steve Jobs of boxing. You're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you, and you brought a good point. You know, Dante. Ooh, that. <laughs> you Go know. ahead. You you already knew I was crazy though. What you talking about? You already yeah. knew that. <laughs> hey Dante. Go ahead again. Hey, you brought a good point. You know, you know, Margarito, yeah, yes, he's tall, but he fights like a short fighter because he's a brawler. And that's actually even, uh, you know, if you got a, a brawler who's short and compact, he's more dangerous than a tall fighter who fights like a brawler because a tall fighter who, who fights like a brawler, who fights like a short fighter, is more uh, opening, you know. But when you got a, a sh like I said, you know, the hardest style to fight is a guy who's tall, who has reach and height on you, and he fights tall. And got a good jab, a good right hand. That's and and you know like Algeria with good footwork too, and knows how to smother you work. So like I said, man, it's gonna be a really difficult fight for Manny Pacquiao, and you know, yeah, we, we will see though. Yeah, it is. I, I just want to say, if if Algeria can keep Pacquiao on the outside, you know, on the edge of the punch, 
Like I said, it's going to be a long night for Pacquiao, you know, realistically. I mean, he can't win the fight. He has to get inside. Of course, we know Pacquiao is, is very efficient at, you know, utilizing the angles. So, you know, I think he will be able to penetrate and get inside. But if Algeria is able to uh, maintain that distance, then, like I said, we, we will be on the verge of, like I said, something, some some kind of Cinderella story. Yeah, and we we yeah, will. Dante, you think? Go ahead. Go ahead, AK. Yeah, I know, I know you're picking Algeria. But you you know with that Manny Pacquiao, of course, you know, you could agree that Manny Pacquiao has a better defense than Provoknikov. But, like, when you say you, you think Algeria going to win, you think he's going to win in China? Look, first <laughs> of all, if we're talking about decisions, I'm only going with my own damn eyes. You know what I mean? So, like I said, Laura Canelo, I went with my own damn oh. eyes. You feel me? I went with my yeah, own yeah, eyes. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, it, the point I'm yeah. making is if, if if my eyes sees Chris winning the fight, I'm not really going off of the decision. You know, I mean, yeah, I, I'll leave that for, you know, for everybody to talk about. Wait, wait, you, you, I'm you saying skill-wise. I'm saying skill-wise. Go, ahead, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You know, the Chinese, the Chinese judges, you know, they, they, you know, the Chinese people got little eyes, so they, they can't <laughs> see like you. But, so they, they might score that fight for Pacquiao. <laughs> you trying to, you, you, know you trying but, to, you trying to get my show shut down, man, or what, man? Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> oh, no, but you know, I, I do agree. You know, if, if, if Algeria wins, like I said, you know, he wins. You know, and it's a robbery if they rob him, of course. <laughs> but hey. you know, uh, I, I just think it's almost no way for him to get a decision. I, but, I, yes, if he wins, you know, people will t – I think he will still be recognized, lose or win as long as he gives a good fight. And if he get robbed, it's even going to be better for him. I, you know, like he, I'm not saying it's a good thing to get robbed. I'm just saying, like, a lot of people are going to be talking about it. I, I can agree with that. I mean, I, I, I see where you guys are coming from, especially when it comes to that perspective or that, that point of view of him fighting in China. Definitely he's going to have to do more. He definitely is going to have to do more. If the fight is close, yeah, you guys are right. They're going to give it to Manny Pacquiao. But I'm just looking at skill for skill. And, and let, me, uh, you know. let me say this too, Dante. Not that I agree with you, but um, what, what, what Dante is saying is who is actually going to win the battle in the ring? Not necessarily the same guy who might get their hand raised. Yeah, absolutely. You know I mean? Hypothetically absolutely. speaking. So. Thanks, for th thanks for clearing that up. Already, That's exactly man. what I mean. <laughs> so um, we can talk about that all day. But since we're running out of time, we got like seven minutes left or five minutes left. Let's go ahead and jump into this uh, Mayweather card, man. Uh, I'm looking at this Mayweather card, and, and I'm a little disappointed, guys. I mean, the last, the last Mayweather card, we had Amir Khan. We had Adrian Broner. We had all of these, you know, people on the undercard or fighters on the undercard. And now I'm looking at this undercard. And we got Leo Santa Cruz against his former sparring partner, <laughs> Manuel uh, Roman, you know, who lost oh, two of his last. Wow. Yeah, that's, that just lets you know it's a damn joke. Go ahead, EK. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, EK. EK, go oh. ahead. you was about to say something? Well, yeah, I just wanted to touch on the, on the Manny Pacquiao situation. Go ahead, uh, go ahead. Just, I, I personally think that this could, this could be reminiscent of, of the situation where Danny Garcia – uh, when he fought Mauricio, Mauricio Herrera. Herrera in Puerto Rico, mm. yeah. yeah, and and, and yeah. just to, just to add add to um, what what China could be like, I think I think uh, if we all remember what happened with Nonito Donaire in his last fight in China, mm. when he fought that guy Vedieka, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it was it was clear from from round one that Donaire was hat was having Problem. huge issues with with, with Vedieka, and, and he got cut. And every, it was all wrong for Donaire, and, and he managed to uh, get a lot of favoritism from the referee and, and escape with a victory. Uh, you know, he, he, did, he did knock him down with, with, with a solid left hook, but, but, you know, that fight didn't have to be stopped. You know, I, I think that was a situation where it got extended to the fourth round so they could stop it, and I just think there's, there could be a lot of favoritism uh, for Manny exactly. Pacquiao. No, uh, one, exactly. Now we, once he gets into the ring. Now and I would I agree with all of that. Like I said once again, I can't guarantee he's going to get the decision, but I think if Pacquiao doesn't knock him out, which he hasn't had a knockout in five years, Chris Algieri is going to expose Manny Pacquiao to the limit. I, I truly believe it. We're going to be. I could already hear the excuses. Everybody going to be saying, "Oh, Pacquiao, <laughs> he old. He passed it's his like, prime. He ain't what he up. used to be." 
we gonna hear it. You EK and AK, you guys know. You hear the, you see the messages all day. You already know. Yeah, it, ran. yeah, no, I, I, I can't disagree with that. I, I think that there's a solid possibility. Yeah. Of Algeria having a very good performance. Yeah. Uh, win or lose. Yeah, and I was saving this question for um, for Ego because he made a video, but I'm gonna ask you guys since we're still talking about this now. Ego, he titled his video. Uh, basically, it was something like, uh, "What does this mean if Manny Pacquiao were to lose to Chris Algieri?" It means I, I, th- I think it says something. I'm paraphrasing, but it was on the lines of that means he never was, um, you know, able to beat Floyd Mayweather, or he was never as good as a Floyd Mayweather. What does it mean, guys, if he were just say hypothetically, if Manny Pacquiao lost to Chris Algieri, what would it mean? Anybody could start yeah, it off. It would- it would mean validation. That would look bad validation. on his resume. Confirmation, validation. There you go. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Go, go ahead, guys. Uh, uh, King Youssef, we ain't heard from you in a while. What, what, what would it mean, man? It would, it would mean like, uh, remember back in, back when Oscar De La Hoya lost to uh, Floyd, and then uh, Floyd retired, so it needed like a new uh, cash cow, like a new face. Mm. So when like when like when Oscar is busy getting to the promoting field, expanding Golden Boy. Uh, Arnhem had a good idea and stuff, like one final payday, like let's all make some money. Mm-hmm. No, I, uh, the point. Yeah, but. Go, go ahead, AK. But, oh, oh, are you still talking? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah well, um, I mean, it, I don't care if Pacquiao wins or lose. I mean, he will never be better than Floyd anyway, any goddamn way. You know yeah, what I'm saying? But exactly. yeah, if he yeah, loses, that's the If we speak the truth, I mean. Be. Yeah, yeah, it's going to yeah. look bad on his resume, losing to somebody who, almost, who, who he cherry-picked, you know. I mean, uh, like I said, you know, it's not a knock on Chris Algieri, but it's just like, it's not a good look on Manny Pacquiao if he loses to Chris Algieri, a guy who just came out of nowhere and, and beats him. And, like, for the people who say, oh, he was the guy to beat Floyd and couldn't beat a guy like Chris Algieri or struggles with him, there's no way, you know, he's he better than Floyd. He would have had a chance. And, and he, he's just yeah. not serious, you know. I mean, he's a good fighter. I like him. But, you know, the truth is, is the truth. And, you know, Floyd Miller is just on another level. We got less than a minute, guys. But, uh, yeah, man, I, I, I totally agree. And not only that, but we also have to look at the fact that Manny Pacquiao, he struggled against Marquez four times, not just one time. He struggled against him four times. Then to add the cherry on top, he got knocked out the fourth time when he was supposed to actually do better, right? You're supposed to do better like we expect. Floyd to do better in a rematch, not mm-hmm. not worse, right? So, I mean, yeah. th- that alone. But but if he were to, do, you know, go through the Marquez situation, then lose to Chris Algieri, you know, that would really say a whole lot, you know, about uh, Floyd Mayweather yeah, in contrast to Manny Pacquiao. Real quick, go ahead and throw it out, AK. Yeah, but as far as Don – hello? Go ahead, go ahead, man, go ahead. Yo, oh, yeah, but as far as the undercard, man, I think – uh, you know, if they put Rigondeaux versus Cruz as, as versus Cruz as the co-main event, that would have been huge, man. Of that would have been a great undercard. Hey, uh, but I mean, but, like the undercard all over. I mean, going from Matisse versus Danny Garcia on the undercard to Amir Khan versus my you know, Amir Khan and Bruno on the undercard to this. I mean, come on, man. They should. I mean, hey, they let, should have put Angulo versus Strzok. On go, go ahead. And yeah. uh, Mikey versus Vasquez and Cruz versus Rigondeaux. That would have uh, that would have been a huge. <laughs> let me, go ahead. And let me say this. Let, save getting... me some time. Go AJ. ahead. I'm go changing ahead. my go name ahead. to King Norrin. <laughs> my name is now King <laughs> Norrin. Go ahead, Norrin. Hey, listen. Go ahead. The undercard is a little unspectacular right now, but I think Floyd is going to put on such a show in this rematch that it's going to compensate. And uh, fuck Fifty Cent. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. All day. I say amen and hallelujah well, why you to that. Do on the end of the show, man? Uh, why hey. you had to do that on the end of the show? Next week, next yeah. week, guys. You're taking up all the time. <laughs> yeah. I'm, next King, week. I'm King Norrin. <laughs> next week, guys. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks to all my guests again. Catch, catch y'all next Ekin, week, man. Great news. show, y'all. Great show. King Youssef, AK. Take us out, Norrin. <laughs> it's been a long time. I shouldn't have left y'all. <laughs> Fuck 50 for life. <laughs>